Good morning, everybody. Sorry to interrupt your uh, conversations. I'm sure you can continue those after the service. Um, just to let you know, my name is my name is Kelvin Taylor, and uh, I'm going to lead us this morning uh, in communion. Can I also welcome those who are following this service at home through the uh, streaming, the live streaming this morning? You are very welcome. Uh, please do, if you're aware of the uh, the liturgy that we use, then please do. Um, do join in as, uh, as we go. The theme of this morning's service is crossing and breaking down barriers. And we'll explore together a little bit more of that uh, through uh, one of the readings. One thing I didn't uh, ask Lynn, was there, is there any bands to be read this morning? No, nope, thank you very much. Just to sort of... Uh, um, by way, a way of um, introduction. If I do things that uh, you're not quite used to, then uh, please uh, just forgive me and, uh, and, and go, to, go with the flow, as they say. Um, I'm, sure it'll, I'm sure it'll be right. Um, and just to let you know that I'm here with, uh, with my wife, Jane, uh, who is uh, sitting in the congregation. And it's a real joy to be here and worship and share fellowship with you this morning. As we begin our service, let's take a moment of quiet. We may well have come from busy mornings already. So let's just take a little bit of quiet before we say together the prayer of preparation. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And again, in a moment of quiet, before we bring our confession to Almighty God, let's just take a, a little moment of time just to recall those things that we really do need to ask God's forgiveness for. So we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And hear the good news of the Gospel. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're going to stand to say the Gloria together.
And this morning we won't be saying uh, the response. So we start with glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please do be seated. Collect for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remain seated for our first reading. first reading is taken from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10 and 14 to 17. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, do you, with your acts of favouritism, really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs to the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over, them, over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> but if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but you do not have works. Can faith save you? <clears throat> if a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and a one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself if it has no works, is dead. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please stand? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 7, beginning to read at verse 24. Jesus honours a Syrophoenician woman's faith. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia, She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Now Jesus heals a deaf and mute man. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven with a deep sigh, said to him, Ephratha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosed and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we stand, let's pray together. Father, you've given us this word from Mark, these wonderful stories. We pray now that you would give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to receive the message that you have for each one of us this morning. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, the theme is crossing and breaking down barriers. And we're going to explore together this morning the first of those two stories from the Gospel of Mark. I suppose one of the more positive aspects of the pandemic has been the rise in creativity honing skills that perhaps you always wanted to do. Perhaps it might have looked like some imaginative cooking. I don't know about you, but certainly Jane's a bit of a baker. And of course, I, from time to time, are tasked to go to the supermarket to obtain baking ingredients. And I have to say, during the pandemic, there was a dearth in one of our supermarkets. I don't know if we've got any bakers here, but certainly you may have experienced the same thing. Where are the cherries? Where is the flour? 
Anyway, there we are. One of the more practical skills that I've kind of honed over the years is the preparation of sandwiches. Can seem to be very mundane, can't it? But we've all got, I've guessed, a favourite sandwich and a favourite filling. Now, as we ease out of this enforced situation, the government has in fact woken up to the fact that we are what we eat and has started to promote a healthy lifestyle. Have you seen that advert that's been on the television just recently? It's about, we've all put on a few pounds. It's done by the NHS and uh, encouraging people to get more active and not to eat as much, snacking and the like. This will all become apparent, talking about baking and sandwiches in a moment. Now, our gospel reading, the first part of that, uh, forms part of the need to satisfy hunger. Of course, as we heard in those two stories, it is about a spiritual hunger. If we look at the bigger picture, at this point in Mark's gospel, we some see something interesting emerging we see a sandwich. If we were to start reading from chapter uh, 6, verse 30, all the way through to 8, 13, we see Jesus doing a number of things. We see him feeding the 5,000 to a predominantly Jewish audience, a theophany, Jesus walking on the water. He then challenges the hypocrisy of the religious leaders. He rewards the faith, as, the faith of a non-Jew, as we've heard this morning, heals a man, and then feeds the 4,000, a non-Jewish audience. You can see the sandwich, can't you? 5,000, 4,000, and all the bits and bobs in between. And as I said, we're going to look at the faith of the Canaanite woman. Our reading mentions that she is a Greek, living in an area that is now Lebanon. So we have Jesus well outside Jewish territory when he meets this distressed lady. The reading in itself, in many respects, is self-explanatory, except for an enigmatic portion centered around Jesus' response to her plea, and in turn, her response. So I'm just going to refresh our memories with some verses. In verse 27, Jesus answered, First let the children eat all that they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. And the woman replies, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he comes back to her, he says, for such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. However, if it is not, of course, a strange and enigmatic portion, if we are in the context of the sandwich. So let's explore what this conversation is all about. Jesus, as we know, had a mission to Israel. Apart from a few excursions like this, Jesus remains solely focused on God's chosen people. So Jesus is very obedient to his Father's will. Now the woman, ever concerned about her daughter, presses her request for compassion. Jesus is under no obligation to help her. First, let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. In other words, my work should not be watered down and denied to those who are the focus of my mission. Now, at this point in the story, it all sounds very unlike Jesus to deny help and runs contrary to other healings. But what we don't have here in this scripture is any description of tone of voice or facial expression. We know from our own experience that something can sound quite harsh on the face of it, but it is tempered by a wry smile. 
a tone of voice, which takes, of course, the sting out of what has just been said. And then we have those impressive words from the woman. She is determined not to let this encounter slip from her fingers. Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs, she says. And this reply draws an inference. Dogs in any household have a recognised place. In replying in such a way, she is not presuming on her position. She, is n she knows she's not from the house of Israel and has no claim to be part of God's chosen people. But surely there are some crumbs to nourish her. So how can this story help us? From conversations I've had with a variety of people, they reveal some interesting behavioural changes that have occurred since we started this pandemic journey. For many, the enforced or personal choice not to go out has affected all of us, of course. Alongside the tragedy of illness, I'm sure you've noticed, even in your own behaviour and in the others around, subtle changes. There is a certain nervousness, for example, of going into large shops or into crowded spaces. The uncertainty surrounding the path of this pandemic has, of course, had a huge impact on decisions that we make. The physical and mental challenges of this are one thing, but how has this affected your faith? Certainly, of course, not being able to worship together has a huge impact on the Christian community, mitigated, thankfully, by digital contact or telephone conversations. But has faith taken a bit of a back seat or has the enforced period of being deepened it? Giving a physical opportunity to come together as a worshipping fellowship in other words, a concrete reminder that we all as Christians are part of the bigger whole. And that's the tremendous starting point of this story because notice the woman in recognising who Jesus is makes her plea. And we see, of course, this on a number of occasions throughout the Gospels. Jesus, who knows the secrets of our hearts, has already identified this woman of faith distraught by her situation, who knows the only answer to her anxiety for her daughter is in the saving grace of Jesus. So we have here not only a healing, but something more profound. The great truth revealed by Jesus and contained in the words of Paul, the Apostle when he says, so in Christ Jesus, we are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, nor slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So here is a woman outside the community of those that were held by Jews to be the chosen people. Yet by her faith in Jesus, she has now entered that new community, born by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. She has claimed that promise as her own. And of course, that has huge implications for us on a personal level. Where we profess Christ, we claim and enter that promise with all its benefits and in these times a path away from anxiety, stress and uncertainty. We have a path towards which we are invited and encouraged by Jesus to follow. The path may not be easy and we may fail from time to time but Christ is gracious and will not forsake us. We stand on the authority of Scripture he will continue to hold us in his saving grace, however we feel and whenever we fail. So we can echo that wonderful, wonderful man, George Herbert, when he said this, 
in a poem called Discipline. Though I fail, I weep. Though I halt in pace, yet I creep to the throne of grace. And the second strand in all this is an opportunity. Recent research has shown that many people are connecting with streamed services during lockdown. And these, of course, include a number of people that have never connected with a church before. From our own knowledge, we are aware that there are people who are seeking answers to spiritual questions. And now these, of course, have been brought into sharp focus and with a sense of urgency. With Jesus' great commission to his followers in mind, let's take existing or indeed start new conversations where the hunger to explore spiritual matters presents itself to us. We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide these conversations on the backs of our renewed or deepened faith. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your word to us in Scripture this morning. And we pray now that you would give us bold hearts to take those conversations that we're having or the opportunities that we may have in this coming week to speak of you, to speak of your saving grace and what it means to us and what it can mean to others. So, Father, we just pray for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit that you will give us the confidence, give us the words to join those conversations. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Could I invite you please to stand and we're going to say the creed together and if you're able to please do join in. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated as we're led in our intercessions this morning.
Today, on Trinity 14, we remember John Bunyan, spiritual writer, who died in 1688, and Aidan, Bishop of Lindisfarne, who died in 651. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Dear God, we pray for all members of our Anglican community, Bishop Debbie, our friend and priest Chris, and the ministry team, church warden, and all those who devote their love and time and talents to St John's in the service of Christ. And we pray for Kelvin, our visiting priest this morning, and for his wife Jane. We pray also for Bishop Tim, and we thank you, Lord, for the gift of your son Jesus. We pray for all those refugee families with children in the world who live in poverty and where the children are deprived of any education. And we pray that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the leaders of nations. We thank you, Lord, for those neighbours who are always ready to help in time of need. And we thank you for our neighbours in the European Union and pray that we continue to live in harmony with them. We pray for the many persecuted Christians and those of other faiths or none who have fled their countries. Lord of justice, we pray for all people who have been driven out of their own lands and pray that all civilised countries will give them shelter and help. We pray for those Palestinians who are constantly persecuted and for the people of Afghanistan. And we pray for those who have suffered in the Hurricane Ida in the United States. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that people may honour one another and seek the common good, regardless of colour or creed. Lord, in your mercy. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray for all those people who find it difficult to enjoy life because of illness, disability, poverty, loneliness, or because they are homeless. And let us pray for those who are separated by distance. But we pray for the Children's Society and the Society of St. James and all charities that help the homeless. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all those known to us who are sick and in need of comfort and those who care for them. Lord, in your time of need, may we remember them and be of help to them. For Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world shine in the dark places where people are in need and comfort all those who suffer in body mind or spirit especially alice and darren doreen denny jeff mia and we pray for all those in need in our local community give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation lord in your mercy And hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray especially for Tom Watson and keep in our prayers his parents, Carol and Dave, and their family, and of his wife, Emma. And according to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for the bereaved, that they may find peace in your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus, we are your lights in the world. Help us to be prepared to look out for you and to listen out for you, so that we can follow you in everything we do. Lead us from death to life, 
from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. And rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Lawrence, Saint John the Apostle and Evangelist, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian peoples to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. I invite you please to stand. I'm always reminded at this point in the service that Jesus came to his disciples behind locked doors when they were anxious, stressed, felt alone, their master had apparently left them. And Jesus came in and said to them, peace be with you. What a reassurance that is for all of us. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, also with you. and I would say to those who are uh, joining us on the streaming service that the peace of everyone here comes to you at home or wherever you are receiving this stream. We can't, of course, uh, share the pieces we would like to, but I'm sure with expressive eyes and a little wave of hands, we can turn and share the piece with all our brothers and sisters this morning. <laughs> whilst I prepare the Lord's table this morning. Perhaps just take a moment to reflect on all that we've said and heard this morning, what it means to us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We're going to use uh, prayer A this morning on page 9. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. 
Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, and it is our duty and our joy at all times in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent, sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forevermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this is our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, 
and feed in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We say together, Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. This is the Lord's table and all who know and love the Lord Jesus are welcome at his feast. If, however, that's not where you're at just at the moment, then please do come up and receive God's blessing this morning.
Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And I understand Lynn has some notices for us this morning. Good morning. First of all, I would like to thank the Rev. Rev oh dear, I can't say this, can I? Reverend Calvin Taylor for leading us this morning in our worship. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Um, there's a slight mistake on the notices if you've seen it. It says on the front page after the service, welcome back to church for tea, coffee, and cake, and the trade craft stall. What it doesn't say is it's the 3rd of October. <laughs> so, sorry about that, but it is going to be the 3rd of October. It's a busy day on the 3rd of October. It's um, also harvest, and we've got harvest at the shed in the evening. So, Now, um, I don't know if very many of you realise, but the last two years, our treasurer has been Keith Field. And Keith is no longer treasurer. He decided that he'd done his two years. And we'd like to thank him. He's hiding from me, Keith. We've got a little something for you, just to say thank you. <laughs> He's hiding. Yes, please. I'll hold it. I won't shake your hand. Isn't it awful? Thank you, Keith. Of course, in the sermon, it was mentioned talents. So maybe you could pray, people at home could pray, that if you feel that you are being called to maybe be treasurer or to help in any other way within the church, please do let somebody know. Thank you. as we draw our time this morning uh, to a close. Shall we stand and receive God's blessing? Whatever this week holds, there may be some joys and maybe some challenges, but rest assured that God is with us in both the joys and the sorrows of this coming week, and we can be sustained by his blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.